Hi guys, welcome back to the Lore Studios. We're going to be continuing from where we stopped in the earlier tutorial where we talk about Android uploading media file to server using retrofit. We actually talked about the image upload. This time we're going to be looking at how to upload a video file to the server. I have my server environment right there on the screen you've seen uh, on the cPanel and I have the upload image.php file that actually assisting us in getting these uh, uploaded to the server. Let's get to quickly take a peep into how this uh, PHP structure is. It takes uh, the target directory which is the uploads uh, folder and uh, it takes also the file name uh, trying to get the file name with uh, the base name and it has the response from the array. So it's going to check if the image file is actually an image or a fake one. We're actually using an image, right? Where they could work for different uh, upload uh, media types, probably image, uh, videos, PDF, and so on. So we're going to be uh, going deeper into how to get the video file uploaded to the server from our Android application. Add it back to Android Studio, I have the layout called the video layout. We have the image layout, uh, we have the video layout right there, uh, which a button click from the main activity gets us down here. So that's just how we're going to arrive at this particular layout. And looking at the preview, you get to see this large uh, square-like shape which serve as the video view. Uh, we're actually using the video view out of the box, we're not using any library, we're not uh, integrating any third party. Uh, functionality is just out of the box for Android and two buttons on underneath the first there is to pick an image while the second is to upload the video to the server to pick a video and upload the video to the server that's the two buttons will be interacting with uh, the video view let's get to look at the video activity in previous tutorial, we talked about how we're going to grant permissions, runtime permissions, uh, basically for Android uh, API 20, uh, 21 and above, I think Marshmallow, so 23 and above, uh, 21 should be Lollipop. So you need to uh, grant runtime permission for Android uh, versions uh, of that. And if you're using lower version, you just declare the permissions rather than a manifest. So we'll actually cover that in previous tutorial. We'll be illustrated to how to get the video and uh, upload that to the server. Uh, we have the video activity that extends app practical activity where you have the views. Uh, we'll be talking about different fields here, the buttons, and the which is the button to select uh, a video and the button to upload a video. Uh, we have a progress bar, we have the video view uh, right there declared and uh, you have the URI to have the video and the path of this URI. Uh, will be stored on the string uh, variable over here. So let's continue on how to get this done. The current playback position, uh, that's going to be in milliseconds. Have that in, as an integer. While the instance of the state bundle, uh, the play time, that's a playback time. Oko also save as a, as a string static uh, variable. Initialize the button over here and also the upload video. That's the pick video and the upload video. The button which is going to be the pick video sets an on-click listener to that uh, where you're going to override the on-click method and what you're going to do you call the intent which you attach the action get content and you need to specify the type which is going to be the mime type which is video you're pointing at any video file be it mpeg be it mp3 mp4 rather uh, and also some other video formats uh, so it's actually going to be directed to that and you start an activity for results passing the intent of the video with the integer which is like an identifier of this request so you have that set across to start an activity after you might have selected the video that's what that's going to do and the upload video also you set on a click listener to that where you're going to be uploading uh, the content down to the server using this method upload file. We get to talk about what that file is going to be doing in a TV. So let's move on. We have the video view which is being initialized and the buffering, uh, the buffering text view. So you could uh, also listen to buffering. Probably uh, it's loading or some other uh, juicy stuff that could uh, actually get the user uh, in, in tune with what is actually happening at the point of the video. 
you have to save it's the state you could save the playback state so it's actually going to continue from there when the rotation of the device to landscape so you have that as well you need to set up the media controller which is the widget that attached to the video view you have the media controller class here you need to call an object on it by instantiating this and set the media player to the view which is the video view and set the media controller also to the controller so there's going to be a controller which is actually going to be for fast forward pause stop and uh and uh basically fast forward pause and stop and uh play so you have that uh in twin with the controller cool the the, the dialogue here which is actually going to get uh this show temporarily when you are picking the video and uh displaying it to the video view let's move on we have the on pause when you when you are when your activity is right not on focus or probably it's on the background you need to pause the video so that the video just don't continue that's just a very good way to and uh, to 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 very good user experience probably you have a, 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 a call at a point in time when you're listening to the video uh, you need to pause uh, the video uh, the volume of the video and even the video entirely so you continue from where you stop uh, when you're returning back to the activity and on stop you need to release the player that that means they are the activity has been closed and uh, you need to release the player for all that calling activity that needs the service of the media playback so you need to call the release player over there we'll get to look at the content of the method right there and on the save instance state where you're trying to get the current position uh which is the playback position in many seconds to the instant state bundle uh, you call the outset put in at the playback time and the get current position based on the video view that's when you're trying to change your rotation from portraits to landscape you need to get a consistent flow of the video now the initialize player where do you need to trigger this method we'll get to look at this uh this method right there we'll get to look at when you need to trigger it so get back to the method on activity for result where you get to pass the request code the result code and the intent data uh, you get to call the super on activity result pass those three parameters and when the result code is okay and also the request code is the integer that's the identifier of a video you get to pass this uh, data further and you test if the data which is the intent is not equal to not that's a very good standard and you pass this you get the data from the intent you pass that to the video URI that's a URI you're getting now that's just not enough it could be good for displaying to uh, the video view since you just need a, a URI to display to the view which will pass right there in the initialized player but you need to get the path the real path further when you're trying to uh, upload that particular file or that particular uh, non non-media type to the server so that's where we call the get path method on the URI we get to look at that later on but before we do that let's look at the initialized player that's going to actually display the video to the video view the initialized initialized player and listen to what the URI which will be we pass that after once you have the activity for results and you have the buffering text view to set the visibility at the point in time you test for the URI if it's not equals to null if it's not you set the video URI based on the video view now you're going to be listening for some stuff the unprepared events and uh now you're going to set the video URI let's get to look cool uh let's move on over here you set that to the video view now you're going to listen for unprepared events that runs after the media is prepared now you set unprepared listener to the video view where you need to share the media player unprepared listener what about you need to provide the method unprepared so uh, what's going to happen that's when you get to set the visibility of the buffering to invisible you restore the save instance position if available uh that's the sick uh, bar which is uh the the uh the the now the 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 player controller now else you skip to show the first frame of the video let's get us started and start playing the video calling the video view start method so it's actually going to start playing the video immediately it gets uh the full uh, capacity of the URI now that's a listener for uncompletion event that runs after the media has finished playing that's when the media 
finished playing completely you set on completion listener to the video view and you also instantiate the media player on completion listener which you need to override the method called on completion passing the media player to parameter objects and uh, you could actually toast a message probably the playback is completed or do something and now what's going to happen to the the sick which is here uh, the you return the video position to the start uh, that's uh, it's been completed so it's actually going to start up again so that's just uh, what that's going to do now when you're releasing the player you need to stop the playback that's when you are closing the application when the application closes completely when it stops uh, which the activity in question stops uh, it's going to actually call the stop playback on the view on the video view we have that uh, set without now after that we're going to get to look at the path how you're going to get the complete path of the URI and upload to the server now how are you going to get the complete path based on the URI gotten that's not just enough you need to get the full path the complete path or uh, unless you're going to have a null, a null uh, URI or you're going to have a URI that is going to, that is not readable which could not be, be uploaded to the server a lot of uh, boilerplate a lot of problem around that if you're not actually doing it correctly now let's get to look at it quickly you have a projection projection adjustment the column you're looking at and we are looking at the video media store the media data that's the projection that's the columns we're looking at now we call on the cursor which is actually a container for the data from the SQLite database now what we're going to do you need to query we need to query the, the media store to extract the particular video or to extract the arrays of videos we are looking at so you call the get content resolver to query this is a method very needed and you pass in those parameters uh, you pass in the URI you pass in the projection the selection argument with its selection sort order and uh, that's it you have the URI which you already have at when you've selected the video you have the projection which is the column you're talking about the selection null argument null and sort order null based on the preferences you need now you test if the cursor is not equals to null a very good standard if it's null already you just return null and if it's not equals to null you move further here you will have to get a null pointer if the cursor is null this can be if you've used a, a you know, the wrong format for the file manager for picking the particular media so that's just it now if you have the the cursor uh, with a uh, full content you need to get the column index or throw it you know just get the index based on the column on the column which is the projection and you pass that as an integer value and uh, you need to iterate and move to first at a point in time and after that you need to uh, get the string which is uh, the column index over here uh, you need to pass that uh, that's going to actually convert so that's the real value of the path that you're looking at which is in string so you anytime you call the get path on the URI it returns this string this string which is extracted from the column index so that's just what we'll be using for our upload now back to the upload we still have the same format the same uh, request code the, 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 the same map uh, which takes into parameters the string and the request body uh, which is the hash map yes, as we've uh, talked about it when we are using the image now you still have it rather the generic hash map uh, which has an object over here which we'll be using and you still share the video part now when you would have gotten the real part from it so you have that right there in the file you convert that to a, to a file to some to a file that will be useful which will serve as the request body and at the request body you need to call the media type to pass uh, you're passing any form of media type uh, which actually takes the file as the second parameter so you have that as a request body and now you need to create a structure of your map uh, whereby you need to put a, the, those values into uh, the map uh, what you're going to put you put the string which is going to be the file name uh, and also the request body which is really what uh, the the media type that you you pass from the file so you have that uh, right there and now you need to call the API config uh, whereby you need to call uh, retrofit to get this uploaded to the server we've actually created that right there in the networking networking folder where you have the API config the app config and the server response uh, where we actually declared the base URL at the endpoint to get that done for us 
Now, after you call the in queue, uh, instantiate the callback, which is the server response, you need to override two methods, the unresponse and the unfailure. That's the response you need from the server. Probably there's a successful uh, response or something happened and it failed. On response, uh, you get the message accurately. You test if it's successful and also if the body of the message is not equal to no. Once you have that test uh, passed, uh, you need to extract the body and get the message uh, from the body. Definitely the message is going to be explicit. We've set that up right there from the server. The kind of response we are expecting a successful upload of an image, a successful upload of a video, a successful upload of a PDF file. You have that setup. And that's actually going to toast to the user. At that point in time, you need to hide the dialogue. You would have set up the dialogue to come up when you're uploading a video file because a video file might be a little bit large. So you actually need a dialogue so that the user could know that something is uploading at the point in time to the server and needs to exercise patience for it to get completed. So once you have that set up, you have a successful message. And if not, if there's a failure, you get a toast that there's a problem uploading to the image. So you should get something, uh, you need to handle it at the point in time. So that's just the basic way to handle the video, just like we've done in the image. It's, it's actually have the same flow. And uh, I, I hope you've been able to understand this and you put this to practice. I'll be uh, uploading the source code or or creating a branch from this because I have the first branch which uh, takes uh, care of the image. Now we'll get to look at the video. So I'll actually be committing to the branch and I'll be sharing the source code in the description. Always look at the description of the video uh, on YouTube to get uh, some details about the video, probably to get some uh, assets to work with, to get the link to uh, the video or to get the link to the source code and to get some other uh, helping uh, details that will help you through the course of the video or through the course of the tutorial. So it's, not, it's just for you, it's for your learning and it's to actually improve uh, any aspect of your Android programming. So thank you guys for hanging out with the Laris Studios. I'll also be showing the screencast and see, let's see how we're going to upload our juicy video to the server. So this is going to be very useful if you're creating the social media application, if you're doing one or two things that deals with uploading of image, you could upload a receipt of uh, a customer, you could upload some five settings that the customer needs to be uploaded to the server for verification. So thank you guys for hanging out with me throughout this video. And please, please don't forget to subscribe to Delaray Studios and have a wonderful time. Bye-bye for now.